Hi everyone, Drini here and welcome to my channel. So we have finally arrived at our destination, which is pretty much the depths of hell. As you can see, I'm enjoying the view here. So now that we have reached our destination, you're probably wondering, now what? What do we do now? So let's dive into the Bitcoin price action just to see where we stand. The potential scenario is still at play. And more importantly, what can we do here now that we are here? And let's dive in. So I have Bitcoin on a weekly time frame here as and as you can see we have finally reached the 200 MA destination of around 22,362. In fact, we have wicked all the way down to around 20,800 before the supposed short relief rally right here which is currently bringing us to around the 200 MA. Now, before we even dive into the price action and where could we potentially go etc cetera, etc. Cetera, it's very important first to understand why is this level very important in the first place? The reason why the 200 MA and the 300 MA on a weekly time frame are very important is because historically, when you look at price action of the past, it's not the fact that this price signals the bottom and then you just YOLO everything here and then you will be rich in a few years time. That is not the reason why this level is important. This level is important because when you evaluate Bitcoin from a risk reward standpoint, we have finally reached this particular level where the reward of future upside potential now trumps the risk associated with investing in this particular price range right here. That, my friends, is the reason why we have been looking forward to this event finally happening. We have finally confirmed that we are reaching levels where accumulation at around this level leads to significant rewards over the mid and long term. However, there are a number of things still to, to account for. The first one, of course, is just because we're here, it doesn't mean that this is the absolute bottom and we will just eventually skyrocket from here. As you can see in cycles of the past, when we reach this particular level, it really does take a while for accumulation to take hold. When you look at the 2013 cycle, it is also not a guarantee that we will stay here because if you can see from before, we actually wick down sometimes every now and then below the 200 MA before our eventual destination to the upside. What is also happening on the stock markets like the S&P and the NASDAQ is the S&P doesn't appear to have a bottom yet. We are still in a macro environment that is heavily skewed towards the downside. So from an, from an S&P perspective, there is still a 9% drawdown that can happen so that we can reach pre-pandemic levels when it comes to valuation. From, from the NASDAQ's point of view, we are around 13% off of the pre-COVID highs prior to the crash and prior to the extensive money printing. It also doesn't help, of course, that inflation is still pretty much skyrocketing. We are nowhere near the peak yet, given everything that's going on. So now that we know that we are probably nowhere near the bottom yet, what should we do now? The first thing that we need to account for is we need to understand that just because we have reached this particular level, it doesn't mean that it cannot go lower. So it can be entirely possible that we will just continue to go down from here. The next levels to account for would be the 300 MA, which currently sits at 16,602. There are a number of things that we can use as support as well. So the all-time high, so the previous all-time high of around 19,806 could be a particular support level before we bounce off. We have not reached that price level yet. If we break through this, then the 300 MA would be the 16,602, which also coincides with this particular support structure right here. If we fall further from here, then we do have another target, which is this swing high right here of around 13,916. So what we're doing here is we're mapping out potential price levels so that we will not be surprised and we will not be emotionally charged when price eventually reaches these destinations. Anything is still possible in a macro environment that is pretty bad. So now that we know that these scenarios are potentially possible, what could we do then moving forward? The good thing about the price level finally reaching the destination is we can finally have our DCA strategy in. And you can have a couple of DCA strategies involved when it comes to Bitcoin. The first one, of course, is just have a plan to accumulate as much Bitcoin as you can by just DCAing a set amount, whether whether you do it on a weekly time frame, uh, in a two-week time frame, in a monthly time frame, doesn't really matter. 
At the end of the day, we know that the risk levels right here are pretty low as compared to the upside potential targets in the future. So one option, of course, is once again, a fixed amount DCA for any particular time period. The second one is what I call dynamic dca -ing. So a dynamic DCA, basically what you're doing is you are assigning higher weightage to Bitcoin going down. So for example, this is heavily borrowing Benjamin's dynamic DCA strategy. You can divide your budget either 5x or 3x, for example. So let's say you have 6,000 as your budget for this particular range right here. This 6,000, you divide it by 6x. So that means 1x would be 1k, 2x would be 2k and 3x would be 3k, totaling 6k. So the way this works is, let's say we have identified that these three price points right here, the 19.8, the 16.6, and the 13.9. A dynamic DCA strategy means when it reaches certain price levels, then you assign a particular x to it. So for example, we know that the 19.8 would most likely be a 1k investment for you. However, when it reaches the price levels of 16.6, because that's the bottom of the 300, then you allot the 2x of your $6,000 budget, which is around $2,000. And when it reaches this particular price point of 13.916, then you assign the remaining budget of your 6k towards this particular price level. What it does is the lower the price, the higher you are putting in. This one takes a bit of skill because you kind of have to know and you have to have the discipline of sticking to your price target and sticking to your budget when it happens. So that's pretty much Bitcoin. What about the rest of the alts? So because Bitcoin is currently at price levels that are very, very attractive from a risk reward standpoint, that makes alts actually very unattractive. Because when you think about it, if you have the money to spare in order to invest it now, why put it in a very, very volatile, high-risk situation where you don't know what the payoff will be a few years down the line when you can just put it back in Bitcoin when the risk levels are so low at the moment as compared to the potential rewards in the future? So from an alts perspective, this is actually the perfect time to really rebalance your portfolio if you are so heavy on alts. Try sticking it into Bitcoin. Try sticking it into other major layer ones like even ethereum for example even though i don't believe in it you can put it in ethereum you can put it some in cardano for example i don't really believe in solana avax matic and the rest but potentially bnb for example anything that has a lesser risk in this highly volatile market you can start doing that strategy as well but of course the major player here is really bitcoin at the end of the day the way you have to treat this particular investment at this point in time is try to consolidate everything on the ones that will have higher guarantees of your financial freedom. Do you have a newborn child? Do you have kids that you're thinking about how do you have the money to send them off to college? This is actually the perfect time to start accumulating a Bitcoin position for their educational future. Are you a young bachelor thinking about your retirement in the future? and you have some money to spare, this is actually the perfect time to really invest, start investing in your retirement account. So as much as the bear markets are really providing us a lot of pain when it comes to our absolute portfolio values, it also is providing us with tremendous opportunity in order to have financial freedom. My best advice here is really stay in the game. When you stay in the game, when you're able to weather this particular storm right here, to accumulate the positions that you need to accumulate and be able to have the patience to wait it out for three, five, seven, ten years, then I guarantee that hopefully by then you would be thanking me for finally be financially free. Yo, 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 before you go, like this video, subscribe, and share this video to your friends. Thank you very much and have a good day.